Yup, it's TMZ Verified, the podcast. I'm Wild. I'm Steph. I'm Jacob. Hello, y'all. Hi. Happy second week of June. I didn't Love know it. what else to Love say. It. Celebrate. Love I, it. A lot going on. It's popping today. Yeah. I feel Jacob's you, man. like, it's I guess to be it's alive. popping today. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Good. Be alive. It's good vibes. Good vibes. <laughs> yeah. Um, should we get into some stories? I think so. Let's okay. do it. Jacob, so, get off. I'll, I'll, ta- I'll go off uh, first. Mm-hmm. So there's, a, you know, Charlie Sheen back in the news. Oh, Charlie. But not for the reason that I would always expect Charlie Sheen to be in the news for. Okay. So apparently he is very upset because his daughter is a rising star mm. on OnlyFans. Oh, shoot. And, you know, so basically he, he's pointing the finger at his ex-wife denise richards uh so he's saying that his daughter is 18 years old uh she's on OnlyFans and she's posting i guess two three times a week and he's saying hey i don't really condone this at all and this is being enabled by my ex-wife denise who uh their daughter sammy currently lives with and uh denise is saying you know listen she's 18 years old she can make her own choices like i i'm just here as a parent to guide her and make you know the best decisions possible if she wants to be on OnlyFans, she could be on OnlyFans. And honestly, I'm totally team Denise on this. I'm like, Same. who is Charlie to talk? Like, do, do Yeah, that. yeah. I feel like this is on brand for them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, I love that. How I do think... y'all feel, though? Like, if it was, like, in that situation, though, as, like, a parent, I could... Oh, you're 18. You can do whatever you want. Okay. Yeah, but, you know, as a dad, I could see why it might rub you the wrong way. Especially, it's, like, 18. You have just become you an just adult. You just became an adult. Yeah, that's yesterday, true. You barely that's true. legal. Yeah, but at the same time, you know, hey, I think you can make a very good argument that being an OnlyFans create uh, content creator, it's like an entrepreneur. I mean, we know okay, we've okay, seen okay. we've okay. seen Bad Bunny or Bad Barbie rather uh, uh, make a ton of money yeah, on OnlyFans, like yeah. millions and millions, and, millions. and, and, and mm-hmm. the same goes with plenty of other people. Right. And uh, again, it's like I. I I think if this is the road that you want to go down, no reason to knock it necessarily. But uh, I guess maybe any dad wouldn't be too happy. Yeah, I don't know if I'd be happy with my child popping a p*** on the internet, like male or female, like my son or my daughter. And and we don't know if she's popping. Oh, well, okay, well. If, uh, if, yeah, what is the, that's that's actually a good point though. Like, what is the OnlyFans content? Is it? It can be anything, really. It can be You go, the moment it's OnlyFans, it's wrong. But yeah, the context is sexual. It can be, Uh, well, it could be anything. Anything and then like, like Steph said, but it, I think in this case it is explicit content. We don't know how explicit. I don't have an OnlyFans <laughs> account myself, but I think ultimately I guess we're all on the same page. Yeah. Here, team Sammy. Yeah. yeah, I mean she can do whatever Denise. she wants. <laughs> I have a really sad story. Really sad news. Mm-hmm. TikTok star Cooper Noriega. I hope I'm pronouncing his last name right. Yeah. He died last week at the age 19. For t- for context for everyone, Cooper was a TikToker with over a million followers. He had a full life ahead of him. And law enforcement told law enforcement sources told us that someone called 911 on June 9th last Thursday. After discovering Cooper unconscious in a mall parking lot, paramedics arrived quickly, but they were unable to revive him. Um, he was friends with a lot of TikTokers. I'm talking like Jaden Hosler, Nessa Barrett, you know, all of them. Um, they posted how much of an impact he had on them. And I really, I mean, it was flooded. All the feeds were flooded with how much of an impact he made on his friends. And on June 5th, days before his passing, this is really sad, Cooper shared that he was starting a Discord group to talk about experiences with mental health. So he was really making an active choice to change things for himself and others. And he opened up about his addiction and said he hoped the Discord group could bring us all together. I quote, bring us all together and create a safe space where people can vent and help others through tough times. So rest in peace, Cooper. This is really sad. Yeah, well, I went on the Discord uh, just earlier today. Same. And I mean, it's incredible to see the amount of people say, you saved my life mm-hmm. right. from keeping by keeping this like open dialogue, this safe space for us to communicate, you know, the, the different type of struggles that we're dealing with. Uh, so I think it's amazing that, you know, even though this is such a this awful, awful yeah. incident, uh, it's clear his legacy is going to live on through chat rooms like this and in different ways for different people. Yeah. And I do love that he was like li- so open. He's like, listen, I struggle with addiction, but I really want everyone to have an open space where we can all come together and feel not alone. I feel like that's super important, especially for influencers in that space, because totally. we, we never, almost never hear about those things. Mm-hmm. It's always like glitz, glamour, flossing and TikToking, but it's like you, these are also human beings. Or not just keeping it exclusive to influencers. Like he made it 
for his fans mm -hmm. too and like everyone together which yeah, i really no, respect I think, yeah i really respect that and again it's just a very sad situation yeah all around. i think what you said wild is exactly right and it sounds like based off what his family's response is what the way that his family has reacted to this they're going to do something much bigger to honor him mm -hmm. yeah his probably. sister posted on his instagram saying thank you for all the support and for our Cooper and just hearing everyone's responses on how much of an impact he made really like means a lot to them mm -hmm. as a family. Yeah. Yeah. So. R.I.P. Um, well, we have an interview today with Taylor, Frankie, Paul, mm -hmm. TikTok. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. You got as long as you say the Mormon TikTok girl, people immediately know what we're talking about. That's what she, everyone knows her as right mm -hmm. now. The TikTok yep. Mormon girl. She really has <laughs> made waves on the platform. Oh, Taylor. And basically what happened for context, she is a TikToker. She's a mom. She lives in Utah. She makes kind of, I would say, content that hints at swinging, partner swapping, being kind of scandalous. Mm -hmm. And right now there's but a she's story. she's Mormon. Like she's a Mormon. But there's a story right now that her and her husband are getting divorced because of partner swapping. And they soft did swinging. Who could have seen that one coming? Right. <laughs> so we really talked to her about it. We asked her, I mean, everything I wanted to know mm -hmm. when it came to this whole story. Yeah, no, and it was juicy. Yeah, it's a good one. If you want to know anything about this situation, she answered it all. All right, let's get into it. Welcome back to Team Z Verified. I'm Steph. I'm Wild. I'm Jacob. And today we are here with Taylor Frankie Paul. Let's just say this girl broke TikTok. You know how they say broke the internet? This girl broke <laughs> TikTok. Hi, Taylor. Hi. Thank you guys for having me today. Taylor's like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> so so why did Taylor break TikTok for those that don't know? Taylor, do you want to explain? Um, I yes, I can explain to the best of my abilities, but um I guess some of my drama was released online, I guess, or confirmed. And so I didn't want to be known as this thing that was released. And so I had to come on and give my backstory of of kind of what had happened because I feel like only like I said this in my life a pebble was given if that makes sense and there was like a whole bunch of sand behind to the story and I felt that it was unfair that mine got dropped and confirmed without me saying anything about it and of course this is my brand and my work so I didn't want to be known as you know this thing without um giving my side of the story so once I announced that what we had been up to i'm sure everyone's well aware but um i guess people were shocked that it was a thing and i guess people thought we were like i've just been reading people thought we were like these perfect moms in a perfect world and or i can only speak for myself so they thought and then there's like all this drama behind closed doors that they didn't think so i think it was shock value to the internet do you think anyone who has not seen you or has not been on TikTok, could you give like a brief summary of what actually you are talking about in terms of context. What went on, what went down, in a brief little summary for anyone who hasn't doesn't know. Okay, um, I guess since it's already out there all over, um, it was said that I had, well, I was getting divorced and that was like the only thing that I was gonna come out and say on TikTok because I was gonna be in a different house. So like, it was very obvious that, that was just gonna happen and I felt that it was fair to share. So uh, we were getting a divorce and then people, I, it was confirmed that I had had an affair. And so for me personally, I just didn't want to be known as this like person that like friends wouldn't have to worry like, oh, she's going to sleep with your husband. And I didn't want to be portrayed as that person. And th there was so much more to the story that I don't think like, I can't for sure say, but I don't think it would have happened regarding the situation I was in. And so like, I wanted to kind of give the backstory and it's already out there that we were I was intimate with like, or we as a couple were intimate with other couples and feelings got involved. And um, it wasn't like, um, I did go on there and say like, it happened like a one-time thing. And that that is true of going like all the way, but there there was like a friendship built and an emotional thing or an affair built. Um, and I did state that online. So, and I've accepted that and I said, sorry. And to be honest, it's been one of the worst challenges of my life going through this the last month. It's been about a month since, and it's been the hardest time of my entire life. Um, and of course, people don't see that because I'm not getting on camera every day and crying and showing like my weaknesses. I've complained a little bit, but um, I think people think because I'm in the wrong, I haven't, I don't have room 
them to be sad or to fail. And they're like, well, you did this. And it's like, yes, I did it, but I still hurt. I hurt people. So I'm human and I'm going to feel bad for the things that I've done. So, yeah, so I kind of want to jump back a little bit. Um, so we know you're a mom TikToker, but you do a very specific type of mom TikToking. Um, you're a Mormon, correct? Yeah, I was born and raised LDS. And then um, there's been times in my life where I'm not like active or I follow the rules. That's very clear, as you guys can see online. Um, but like, the rules that I don't follow doesn't necessarily mean like you can't be in the church, if, if that makes sense. I want to take it back to the beginning, the very beginning. Of course, you're on Mom Talk. For anyone who doesn't know, Taylor is the kind of like the main girl of mm -hmm. Mom Talk. You, you get a bunch of Utah it. moms that come together and they film TikToks. Where did that all begin? What was the first time that you all did the Mom Talk TikToking together? Um, I started to do like mom, like mom stuff like on my own, and then I brought in a friend, and me and her started to, and then I brought in another, like a third friend. And we were like a trio. And then um, after we started making videos together, more girls in the community were like, hey, I, I TikTok. I would love to come. And so we we eventually got to, what, 20-something girls that were in the community that did the same thing. And we all, we all did it. And we had so many moms out there that wanted to do it. And to be honest, I didn't put a lot of it together. Like, I, I feel like me and the, a couple girls, like, initiated everything. But, like, when we started to branch out, I wasn't the one putting stuff together. So when moms were like, we don't fit in, we're not good enough, we can't. And it wasn't like that. It was more so like we couldn't have the entire state come. Like it just is not realistic. And I would, if someone asked me, can I come? I would be like, yeah, I like come. But I wasn't like reaching out specifically to people being like, hey, do you want to come? Like it wasn't that exclusive as people thought. It kind of just was like, who was really trying to get in. And that was the goal. I was like, this is my job. If, if you're wanting to come and put in the work and, and make these collabs, I would love that. Um, but for me, it was more like a work and, and collabing with people as like every creator does is they want to collab, you know? So, um, and I, a lot of girls wanted to come for fun and that was fine too. I mean, why not? Um, but again, it, it wasn't to the level that was their job. So it wasn't as important, if that makes sense, you know? So you're with this squad, you guys do TikToks. And, and of course you have a husband. So at what point do you and your husband think, you know, we should start maybe being intimate with other couples and why did that feel necessary in your relationship? It honestly wasn't a conversation. It was more like it just happened. Um, it had just happened. And then uh, um, we like, like talked about it kind of just made sure like both were like okay with the situation and and we were and so then it happened you know quite a few more times well so just to clarify so each of you were being intimate with other people and you were doing that independently and then you decided you you guys both figured out that one was hooking up with the other or vice versa and you talked about it and you said, all right, this is cool. We can be copacetic with this. It was more like it happened all together, not like. Um, so kind of take us through like, it. Like what you guys all met up at one place, all of mom talk. And then you guys all set, separate and go, oh, I kind of think he's cute. Or how does that all go? You go and all of mom talk goes into one room. Did you guys separate off? How did that first time happen? So I did clarify in my um, live that it was not mom. It, no, not really mom talk. It was like our friend group, if that makes sense. So mom talk had really nothing to do with any of this. Um, none of them were involved. I can't, is, I can't really go into depth on that, but majority of mom talk was not involved. It was like my friend group, if that makes sense. So I have mom talk and then my personal friend group. And so that's where it's kind of confusing because I, I can't talk about anyone else. Um, but per, like mo mostly mom talk is not involved. Okay, but that first time, you don't have to say names, you don't have to be specific, but that first time you and other couples met up, you and Tate, your husband, met up with other couples, was it sort of like, how did that all go down that first time? Um, we were all intoxicated and it kind of like, it starts with girls and then, um, and then the guys join and then um, 
sorry, I'm trying to be careful with my words and I'm walking on eggshells here. So then we all like kind of just did our, with our own spouses things like together, if that makes sense. And then um, as time went on, it progressed. Yeah, I just have to be, I, yeah, I'm just trying to be careful to only talk about like myself. So. Okay, so you guys do, you go off in couple swap as you called it in your life, kind of couple swapping, right? It did happen, yes. So did you and Tate ever talk about this afterwards, being like, okay, we're gonna do this now all the time? Or did was there like a group chat situation? Like, okay, we're all gonna meet up one more time and try it just again? Or how did that all happen? So it happened a couple times. And then my we talked about it, my husband and I, and it was like, he actually was like, I think this needs to come to a stop. And because we were nervous, because there were these friendships and your we friends that feelings could get involved. And we kind of knew that from the beginning that that was a risk you're willing to take when you're, you're opening those doors. And so he wanted to put a stop to it. And of course, like, I'm not going to lie, I wasn't enjoying it. And so it, it brought like spice for marriage, or maybe that was something that was lacking. Um, or it was lacking. I can't say maybe it was. And so I enjoyed it and so it was kind of a battle and and then it blew up one night when I messed up you know and so um yeah so when you say you messed up that one when you say you messed up that one night so basically you guys had an agreement that it would only it would just be everything except sleeping together right and then you went over the line which you were super open about and transparent on social media so then you also said that you developed feelings for that person. Was the feelings reciprocated from that specific person that you went over the line with? Yes, the feelings were mutual, yes. But like, what inspired you as you're like sitting home in Utah? Why did you even decide you wanted to start making mom TikToks? Or like, what inspired that content creation? Um, I got into it during quarantine when I was, I guess bored like all of us were and TikTok I think shot up probably during that time because we were all kind of just looking for something to do and then I started to make them and then things popped off I actually started quite like I would say a lot of innocent content it was like me my children cute innocent things and then I I joked a lot like I am I would say I'm very like I don't know like a jokester and so I would no you do say some stuff that's like (laughs) (laughs) yeah I, I would put out satire content and then people would fall for it. And to me, I was laughing behind the camera because it was just so far off that I'm like, you really believe this? Like, come on. But I went with it because it was doing well for me. And of course it was growing my page. And then I, I got a management team. So this was like a, a cool gig. And so my page over time became more satire and not real. And people were like, why do you, why do you lie so much? Like you're a compulsive liar. And it was, wasn't really like that. I mean, I'm sorry that you believed that I was a grandma. Like, I don't really know what to say. To clarify, how old are you specifically? Cause on TikTok, you're 50 years old. So what's your real age? <laughs> I just turned 28. Okay, you turned 28. <laughs> I just had to clear that one up. Cause I personally, maybe I'm just gullible but Mm -hmm. when I would go through your page I'd be like oh what's real what's not (laughs) I I love that about you that you're super like a jokester I think that's what made your TikTok take off do you find it difficult though now that you've had this like more serious situation on TikTok to then go back to like the funny like super engaging just comedy stuff um no to be honest I've had a month of like being completely in misery and sad and still am to be honest but my personality if if you know me personally i'm very um i would say i i don't know like i i'm not like completely passive but i am i i make jokes out of a lot of things and whatever that is through the hardest times of my life i will try to make a joke out of it to maybe help myself and not look at it like just more like lightheartedly if that makes sense um so i do have some jokes that i've already filmed that are going to come out and people will take that as they will um but I would say that I'm just, I don't know, I'm, I'm going to continue to joke and people might take that the wrong way. <laughs> What's your status with like mom talk? Again, you don't have to say specifics, but are there some girls that have really been with you during this hard time? Few, uh, very a few of them, because 
I guess I really haven't been able to personally talk to a lot of them. So I know that they only hear one side of the story. And um, I've had a, a few of them reach out and make sure that I'm doing okay. And so, yeah, a v- very few of them. What's your, uh, what's your relationship like now with your soon-to-be ex-husband? Yeah, what's yeah. your guys' relationship like now? Um, It's good. Again, it's been a month of, like, waves, to be completely honest. It's like, it's been very, uh, I don't know, like, um, eye-opening, I guess, if you will, just about life in general, like, where where we stand with everything and just life and our, our values and our morals. It's just kind of like, I don't know how, I question every day, how did I get to this point? Because... I was a good wife. I was a good friend for so long. And I, I, I went to everything opposite of that. And I really don't know where it went wrong or I lost that. So it's been really sad. And my, my soon to be ex has been amazing and checking up on me and has been a really good sport. Of course, he's hurt through all of this. And that's what breaks my heart the most is that like, I've hurt him in that way. Um, but I guess I don't try to justify it by any means, but like my family's super supportive and this was like a, a two person agreement. So like it it is bad. And I know I made the bigger mistake, but I guess like we mutually both went into this, if that makes sense, you know, Mm -hmm. with that risk. So uh, as I guess one relationship, you know, you're, you're going different ways. Is there anyone you're currently intimate with or any new relationship that's been budding? Not right now. Um, I, I want to get my divorce finalized before I were to jump into anything or make anything official just because I feel like that's the right thing to do. My husband and I are soon to be ex have made it very clear though. Like you do whatever you want. I'll do whatever I want on paper. We're together, but like we're done at this point. So we all have free agency. to. We both have free agency to do whatever we want if we wanted. Um, but out of respect, I would love to just get this finalized so I can kind of move on to that next chapter of life. Do you and that person that you crossed the line with that you both mutually have feelings for each other keep in touch anymore? Is it complete radio silence? Uh, yeah, we're we're in touch. Is do you want to take this TikTok thing as make and make it a career and really take off with it? And what's your direction now? I'm sure you want to get away from you know the swinging couples or swapping couples thing. What's your next move? Um, I have been thinking about that a lot and I, you guys are the first podcast I've actually agreed to since this, because I've been just like hurting so bad and, you know, like I need to be cautious of what I do and do not say, of course, out of respect for others. Um, but I would like to bring awareness of, um, however I may do that, if it's on podcast or interviews, but like to share the feelings that I had and and I guess the aftermath of that and my mistakes, like what I recommended to people or the trials that it came with, but also like the feelings, like being, I guess, unhappy in a marriage or like lacking something. I've had so many DMs since this is like, Hey, I actually struggled with that. I would have never said that out loud. I didn't like people. It's a very taboo conversation, right? Like you're little, you're missing something in your marriage. And for us, there was a few things. Um, but it's not talked about. It's very taboo. And if you come out and say it, you look like a horrible spouse, right? So I just feel like people naturally human and human nature, there's chemistry with other people. You're attracted to other people. Um, it is what you do with that. Of course, I obviously messed up, um, on that part, but those feelings are natural and they're, they're in us, whether we say it or not. And so for me to go through this and go through this awful trial, it's, it's been traumatic months to be honest, but to also see like, the light that it comes from, but also to teach people what this came with. And I would love to spread that and bring, I guess, this obstacle, there could be light out of obstacles, you know? I think you are such a prankster that maybe people don't see you as someone who could ever be serious in her career. But something you did that I really admire as like a woman myself is you were very honest. You go, listen, Mm -hmm. I was actually enjoying the you know, spice in my marriage. Right. I, you know, that's really taboo, not only in marriage and relationships, but in Mormon church. Mm-hmm. Like that is like, I mean, I'm not Mormon. I've never been involved in that, yeah, but yeah. I'm guessing that's very taboo. Yeah. And it is like a no, no in our religion. Like, um, 
polygamy was once practiced in our church, but that was, I don't know specific dates from like 1800s and I think it ended in the 1900s. So it's not a thing, but people do remember that. So when they hear like Mormons polygamy, they, they try to put it together, but it's no longer a thing. Um, but yeah, it is a no, no in the religion for sure. And I think that's again, why it's more shock value when they, when they heard that. I, I heard you say in one of your videos that you had to like come out with this situation to your parents. What was that conversation like? <laughs> it was the worst thing ever. <laughs> um, I actually, I was in shock. This, I, it, everything went downhill on a certain day. And then my mom came over and I was in bed. I could not move, to be honest. And my mom's like, what's going on? Tell me. And I literally just laid it all out on her. And I was like, this is what we've been up to. And then, of course, my family was disgusted. Um, they were shocked and they're just like, did you not feel any guilt from this? Like you, you have children, like where were your, where, where was your thought process? So of course they didn't raise us this way. They raised us with really good values and the example they gave us. So it was just like, I think they were appalled and like shocked about it. Um, I was embarrassed of course, you know, to have to admit this to my family um it's been too because this is all over the internet this is all over it's been on news and so my family's been questioned and other people's families and I understand that's how I, I've heard a lot of people in the process so that was a nightmare in itself for sure but there were families very loving and forgiving they are just like look you you've done this it's done how are you going to move forward you know right mm -hmm. I totally, I totally can see that. I, I wonder too, um, I was a fan of yours before this whole drama. Like I would, I knew who you were. I would scroll. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, oh my God. And she ain't got kids, by the way. She just I don't like... have kids. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Right, so right. I was you just, just make a good fan. Content. <laughs> yeah, it was entertaining. But I do have a question. When I, when this all came out, I was very curious. What was that last straw that made it just explode? Because mm -hmm. when I say you broke TikTok, truly, I mean, my mom was coming up to me and you know, <laughs> my mom is not a TikTok girl. And she goes, how, how did this all, how did this begin? Like, what was that last straw? Did someone spread a rumor about someone else, about the situation? Then you got to go, oh, I have to clear this up. Yeah, how yeah. did it all burst into flames, that last straw? Um, okay, so I had posted two TikToks saying, like, I'm becoming a single mom, I'm going through a divorce. And I did that a little fast, like going back, I should have taken some time. I'm learning from all my mistakes as I go. And I've made a lot of them in this last month. And I don't think I'm, I'm done. I'm human. So I probably will make more, totally. to be honest. Um, right. I'm like, we're still like, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> trying to learn. Yeah, I'm like trying to learn from them. But um, I guess I was, I made two TikToks about the divorce and then I started to see like cheater, like all over my, um, my, my post. And so I was like, okay, it's, it's been spread. And I, it's only, it only could have came from certain mouths. If that makes sense. It was a very, very exclusive. I knew, I knew that it came from mouths, right? The wrong people heard it, unfortunately. And so I'm like, well, it's out there and you're only getting that side of the story. I'm not going to be known as just like a girl that will go sleep with a friend's husband. Cause that just clearly wasn't the case. That was not the story. And I didn't want to be known as that. Like who wants to be known as that? Did I make that mistake? Yes. But was there more to the story when you hear it all? It's like, I guess there's a lot of people are like, well, you, you open those doors, right? Like, it's not like I just walked on over to someone's house and was like, let's do this, you know? There, there was that that was built up to that so I wanted people to know that this is what was going on because my stuff has been released and confirmed I have to tell my story now and I'm so sorry that everyone that was involved or closely involved I mean you brought yourself they brought themselves you go if well. I'm going down <laughs> you're all going down with me <laughs> you go I'm not going down alone <laughs> Wait, Taylor, so I have another question. What is some, like, okay, you've been through this. It was crazy. What is now some marriage advice that you'd give to, like, other young couples who may even be, like, considering something similar or in similar situations? Um. Yeah, so I, I have seen since this has all came out, um, sw swingers come out on TikTok and say, look, there is a right way to do this, and it's it could be healthy. Me, personally, I, I didn't do it the right way, and I wouldn't recommend it because of all the trauma that it has brought me 
Um, I also think if you're, I maybe I'm like learning this is like if you're married to the the right person, you probably wouldn't have to be seeking these things if you were healthy. If that makes sense, in a healthy marriage, there was obviously something lacking there, which is why we participated in these things. Um, but I think if 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 you're married to the right person, you probably shouldn't need to venture out. I can't say though because I'm not judging. I obviously can't. I've been there, so if that works for you in an open relationship, by all means do it. But the amount of traumatic events that it's brought to me, I, I couldn't dabble in and I wouldn't recommend it personally. When I was watching your TikTok before this kind of all exploded, you did, you were very open that you and Tate were in separate bedrooms. Was that kind of a joke or was that also a part of this whole thing? It was real. Um, that was real. I don't think, and maybe there was a disconnect there. I think we had other disconnects I don't think the room was the problem just because like in our heads you're not together when you're sleeping right so as long as you're like intimate and making those like conversations happen and then you split off we didn't see a big deal with that um I think after all of this had came out um we I look back and I'm like yeah there there obviously might have added problems to that like being alone, having your space, too much space, you know, where like things can lead to not so good things, you know? Right. Is this something that you'd ever do again in your next relationships? Or are you, are you now more open or less open than now that you've experienced that? Like would I be in an open relationship in my next? Or like swap uh, couples or swing again? Uh, no, I would not. <laughs> Taylor's okay. like, I'm She's done. like, I learned my lesson. <laughs> got it. Got it. Got it. Taylor, I do got to ask. A lot of people, because you do like that, like, satirical kind of parody stuff or you have in the past, people have been saying that this was just simply a publicity stunt. How would you respond to that? It wasn't. Unfortunately, I wanted this to be a dream. I, I was really waiting to wake up in the first week. I was like, please just wake up. This is not real. This is not a dream. Or this is a dream. Like, I... I literally was so, I was in denial that this was even a thing. And then it did, it come out, it came out and it, it hurt a lot of people that were not involved and never were. And unfortunately they, I guess it was grouped in. So people were like having to clear their own names, which they didn't for me. If it, let's say another girl had came out and said this and I was, I wouldn't have been nervous because I feel like if you know who you are and your, your truth and you're not guilty of anything, you shouldn't have to worry if that makes sense. Like, What's one thing that you want to clear up that you haven't gotten to talk about publicly, that this is your chance, clean slate about the situation? What do you want to say? Um, I just feel like there's, there's, there's two sides of every story. There's my side, there's their side, and then there's the truth that lies, you know? And I feel like a, a lot of people have only heard one side. And so I am looked at as the villain. And maybe I am the villain in this case because I did mess up. But um, there's just a lot more to the story. And obviously that no one will ever know the, the true details of it. And that's OK. But um, I feel like I, I did mess up. But I overall am. I would like to think of myself as a really good, until then was loyal, a good friend, a good wife. And I hope that I can like learn from this and, and restart that because I don't want to be a villain, you know? Yeah. Right. Everyone makes mistakes. Right, I think right. with internet culture, they forget that. And it's also, mm -hmm. I mean, this is probably never supposed to be like a public thing anyway. Right. So you dealing with that alone is, you know, yeah. pretty intense. How are you dealing with that though? Like, what are you doing for yourself in this time? Well, recently I've been trying to only listen to like positive like books. Matthew McConaughey has actually helped me a lot through this. I've been listening to his speeches, his books, and it's like it's refreshing to hear someone go through all these like awful things and to overcome them and you can become a better person. Um, he does say we all have a good wolf in us and a bad wolf and they're both hungry. I feel like for a lot of my life I fed the good one. And there's been two periods of my life that I fed the bad one. And the commonality in both of them is that I wasn't with God or Jesus. I didn't have any of that in my life. And those have been the most miserable times in my life, those two times. That's the commonality I've had to like think about. And like, what is the commonality here between this time and then this that have come out? And it's just been like, 
I guess, know Jesus and God. I don't know if you guys are religious at all, but I feel like whatever it is you believe in or the universe, it's just, um, I feel like that's what I've lacked between those two times. And it's brought nothing but sadness and misery. I actually was on the the toilet the other day because I was hung, I was hung over and I wanted to numb my, my pain so badly that I went out with a group of mom friends. And then the next day I was on the toilet and I was crying so hard and I basically surrendered. I, I lifted and I was crying. I was like, please just help me. Like God, Jesus, whoever's listening, just help me because I don't think I can get through this without their help. I don't think anyone can help me. I'm in therapy right now, but I hurt so, so bad. Have the things I've created and I've done. Um, but I, it's a wave of emotions. Like every single day there's rage, there's sadness, there's a little bit of like, I'm, I'm having a, it's okay moment, but overall it's been really, really hard. And people, they're not seeing that on the camera. They're only seeing me when I have to smile and I'm trying to make a TikTok, right? And they don't see that remorse and that I'm not one to show that. Um, I'm very, I suppress a lot of stuff and that's something I'm working on in therapy to like, just feel that emotion, let it out and then let it go. And I'm having a really hard time letting these things go. But. Yeah. You talked about like giving yourself up, you know, to God and your religion. Are you able to still go to church ceremonies right now? And are you still involved in the church? Yeah, I'm able to, if I want to, I haven't gone since, uh, to be honest, I'm kind of like embarrassed to go back because I'm sure it's just been spread all over here, especially in Utah. It's called Small Lake City. So that means everybody Small knows Lake everything City. about everyone. And I know that it's been spread so far out here that, um, I, I go in church and I just know, like, right. I, I, I'm nervous. I'm nervous to go back. And then also like, I have to probably go talk to a bishop about the things I've done. And yeah, yeah. I haven't been back, but I can. Yes. I do have a fun, lighthearted, girly question. Sorry, Wild. <laughs> I gotta just, your hair is the most beautiful thing. I want to know hair tips. I know that may, everyone's probably looking at me like, why are you asking about hair? <laughs> I want to know hair tips. You wash it in the bath. You only wash it every <laughs> nine days. Like, I have hair. I want to know the secrets. How do I get my hair like yours? Okay, so I do say the same tips every time. Um, I do wash it in the bath because, like, for TikTok guidelines, I, I'm covered, right? Um, if I were to go in the shower, it would be taken down. So I do that for that purpose. Um but I only wash it once a week. And just because I like dirty hair, it styles better for me. And it'll, you'll train it to produce less oils. And so it just becomes healthier over time. At least in my case, every hair is different. So it might not work, you know, for yours or someone else's. Um, less heat. So let it breathe. I only straighten it once a week. I leave it for like four days. And then if I want to curl it, I'll curl it and then leave it for the next three days. And then that's at my wash point. So I never blow dry. I only comb it when it's dry because it's very fragile when it's wet. So for me, I wait till it's dry, but the key is to like, kind of just let it breathe and let it grow, do its thing, you know? Yeah. Cause I will say when you're scrolling through your TikTok, those hair videos got <laughs> just as many views almost as like the drama ones. Everyone's obsessed with your hair. <laughs> okay. I yeah, got one more question that is Mormon related, but not really Taylor related. Sulkin, is that a thing? It is. Unfortunately, it's oh. a thing. Okay, wait, explain it to the people who don't maybe not know what it is. Okay, so soaking, <laughs> at least to my knowledge, is where they, like, <laughs> it's so bad. So you, he puts it in her and doesn't move. So it's not considered sex. Oh, so you're actually just so, like, <laughs> <laughs> got it. Okay. Just I think my brain could have figured that out, but the visual, like, okay, got it. Mm, okay. So that's like a very Mormon thing to do. I, I've been told, I mean, I've never, to be honest, ever done that or participated in that. Um, but yes, it is a thing. <laughs> okay. I have one last question. This is my last question. Five years, Taylor Frankie Paul. Obviously, I, I better be seeing you on my TikTok FYP. I better be, where do you see yourself in five years? <sighs> I, I love love as much as people don't believe that. Um, and maybe that's why this all started is because I lacked that and looked elsewhere for that, that attention, that love. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, and so I would love in five years, I hope that to maybe have found someone 
again and to maybe start fresh and I don't I, I do want more children um so hopefully to have like a family and and just start fresh and hopefully get what I, I was lacking you know and and for my my husband too or my ex that maybe he can find what he was lacking in different partners and maybe find someone with more com commonality you know that makes sense um, would you ever do like and, a reality show and further, or oh, sorry go ahead Oh, no, go ahead. I was gonna say, would you ever do like a reality show? Like, I don't know, we're hot. A lot of people were saying that TV. you were doing this to get on Real Housewives. Is... <laughs> but would you do a reality show if you were offered yes, the chance? Okay, let's clear that up. Let's clear that up. Let's clear that up. <laughs> um, I, I would. Okay, so I was interviewed for like the Real Housewives, and that's where this all kind of was. Like, she's trying to get on there, and it was. I, I interviewed it. I interviewed for it, to be honest. I, I, I personally didn't think I was like a good fit for that because I am, I would say a nice person and I'm not going to go confront someone unless I have to kind of thing. Like I'm not going to be mean or anything until I have to get a backbone to stick up for myself. So I don't think I had the drama for that. I guess then I couldn't really tell what was going. I couldn't tell them. Oh, this is what I'm up to, you know. Like by the way, also. <laughs> yeah, I think if they would have known, because I've been interviewed I th about three times for reality TV shows before this all came out, and they're like, "Do you have anything that would, you know, make a good reality TV show?" And I was, I was like, "Oh, I do, but I, I can't speak about it." So mm. they'll be calling you soon, probably. right? If they spun the block next month and was like, "Taylor, look, sis, we need you. Would you? Would you do it? Would you go in Real Housewives?" I would be open to it, yes. Okay. But that was not my goal. That was never the goal here. Right. But mm -hmm. if someone, I do have interviews this week. Oh. So we'll, we'll see. Okay. I'm like, well, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Taylor, thank you so much for joining us. Wait, I have one more question. All right, I don't know if this is like one of your playing things, but you said before that you were like, these are my sister wives. Are you, do you actually have sister wives or was that like a joke? Nope, that is all of <laughs> Good question. All right, cool, I was cool. wondering. <laughs> Taylor, Frankie, Paul, thanks so much for joining us. We really thanks, appreciate Taylor. it. Thanks, Taylor. Thank you guys so much for having me. Thank you guys for watching this episode of Verified. If you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe. If you're listening to us on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you get your podcasts, so subscribe there as well. We have a lot of cool interviews in the pipeline, and we'll be sure to see you guys next week. Thanks.